Right, g'day everyone. Welcome to our little presentation on critical discourse analysis. So let's take a look at what it is. It's a way to examine the power relationships that are present in a text and how they're established and reinforced. And here's a little breakdown on each of those parts of that word. What we've covered so far, we've done first read, we've done big five, and now we're getting into critical discourse analysis. And they can be independent, you can do them by themselves, and you'll still have a nice analysis. You can do them together, and you can still have a nice analysis. So let's assume that we're going to do all three types of analysis as steps in developing a strong argument. So our first reading is going to be, well, what was my reaction to the text? We do that first, and then I come over to Big Five, and I think, well, what is my evidence that I can use, and that is in the text? And then critical discourse analysis, I come here, and then I've got, well, what does it say about society? What point can I make about the text? So let's get into it in a little bit more detail. So the questions we can ask, or the areas of questioning that we can use to interrogate the text, we've got framing, which is all about the perspective of the writer or speaker. And so let's take the US example. Um, we might have a text that's coming from a democratic background or a republican background, and that will help shape that text and the biases in the text. Foregrounding is next up, and I think this one's really important because it's all about, well, what issues uh, are emphasized in the text? What's made important is another key question there. The reverse of that is background, what's backgrounded in the text, and that's things that are played down or reduced in importance or minimized. And so that can help us uncover what voices are silenced in this text. And so our last questions are all about the audience. Is the intended audience expected to share the views of the text? That's going to have an influence on the approach the author takes to the text. Now it could be that the audience is receptive, which means they're friendly, or hostile, not very friendly. Topicalization is all about what's put at the front of each sentence to show what the sentence is about. And that can help indicate what is valued or devalued in the text. And finally, we've got agent-patient relations. Now, this is all about who has the most authority or power in the sentence. And so if an article or blog post wants to give agency to someone, they'll put them in the active voice, generally speaking. And so if an article wants to... Um, ascribe positive attributes to a politician or a celebrity, then they'll make the politician or the celebrity very active in what they're doing and I'll emphasize the positive things and that that person did those positive things. If they're trying to reduce the amount of agency or power that someone had or blame they had, then they might give them a patient relationship, which means that Someone else did it, or it's not clear who did it, um, but it wasn't really that person's fault. So how does this help us with our thesis development? Remember that we're looking for how power relationships are established and reinforced through language. And so that leads us to these types of questions. Remember, these are not the only questions you can ask, but there are some good places to start. So it could be, well, what does society value or dismiss? So what's important to that society? Ways of behavior. And what's not important or what is considered abhorrent or wrong? What does the author value or dismiss? So same thing, what's important to the author? What views are they putting forward? And what are they ignoring or forgetting or um, not really dealing with effectively? 
what biases are presented in the text and what are the implications. So we'll be looking at what is favorable in the text or what stereotypes are presented in the text and what are the implications of, of that. If the text is um, reinforcing a stereotype, what does that mean for the group that is stereotyped? And then finally, who is presented as powerful in the text and what are the implications? So it could be a person who is presented as powerful or a political party that is powerful and that might have strong implications for an upcoming election. Alright, that's it for now. Enjoy your writing.